Whether you're a theatre kid or just love to dance while you dungeon delve, bards are an underrated pick for characters in Baldur's Gate 3, and there's plenty of fun to be had among the song and dance of your latest dice rolling adventure. While there is plenty of combat to go around in Baldur's Gate 3, sometimes you just need a little bit of music in your life and perhaps some convincing words if anyone needs a little persuading. While the bard is a little overlooked when it comes to the 8 classes in the game, you can do some serious damage both in and out of combat with the right stats and skills. So with that in mind, we put together a little guide to help you get the best build for your bard and make sure you keep them singing right to the very end. The Bard in Baldur's Gate 3, just like it is in D&D, is a charisma-based class that can switch between spellcasting and melee depending on your specialisations and your needs in combat. Many of the available spells benefit from charisma status effects, so you're going to be forcing a lot of saving throws, but a lot of the benefits come from outside of combat too. You'll want to pick the Bard if you're looking to be a cunning linguist and get the best out of dialogue scenarios, as you'll be able to pass persuasion, deception and even intimidation skill checks with relative ease. On top of that, you'll get plenty of Bard-specific dialogue options as well to flourish many a conversation with prose and song and potentially speak your way into higher places than you might otherwise have been able to reach. There are a total of three bard subclasses that players can choose from in Baldur's Gate 3, giving them a different approach depending on how they want to play through the game. College of Law, College of Valor, and College of Swords. If you're familiar with D&D, you'll likely know the difference between these already, but for the uninitiated, a College of Law bard goes heavy on the dialogue specialisation, giving you extra boosts to certain skill checks and a new way to harm your enemies with words. Choosing this subclass will grant you proficiencies in Arcana, Intimidation and Sleight of Hand, while also giving you access to Cutting Words, allowing you to literally deal damage by hurling insults at your enemies. Sticks and stones may break their bones, but a pointed comment about their appearance will scar them forever. College of Valor is for those who dreamed of being on the stage, using music to inspire your allies and support them in fights. You'll gain access to the combat inspiration feature, which allows you to inspire an ally to add plus 1d6 bonus to their next attack roll, ability check or saving throw. And finally, the College of Swords is perfect if you want to make your bard an adept fighter, as well as decent at the chat giving you a number of different combat skills to enhance your effectiveness in hostile encounters, and while you're limited to how many times you can use them, the versatility they give your character in a fight is very useful indeed. There's Slashing Flourish, which allows you to attack up to two enemies at once, Defensive Flourish, which increases your armor class by four if you hit during an attack, Mobile Flourish, where you thrust your weapon with enough force to push your target back, and afterwards you can even teleport to the target, and there's even ranged options for all those as well. If it didn't seem obvious right away, our pick for the best bard subclass in Baldur's Gate 3 is definitely the College of Swords. It gives you the greatest amount of flexibility when it comes to your wider adventure, and while you can, of course, skip many hostile encounters through clever dialogue, many fights are inevitable and having the skills to succeed within them is important to have. And by simply being a bard, you're already ramping up your chances of successfully talking your way out anyway. So starting from level 1 and working up to the mid-game, what's the best build to go for if you want to be the most successful bard this side of Baldur's Gate? At level 1, kick things off by making yourself a wood or high half-elf. Take the entertainer background for all the extra clout you might need, and give yourself the leer as your instrument. Take proficiency in persuasion and performance, and through your other choices you'll already be proficient in insight, deception and intimidation, making you a charisma machine and massively ramping up the chance of you sweet-talking or threatening your way to success. For your ability points, take an 8 in strength, you don't need to be strong when you can sing. Take a plus 2 boost to your dexterity and leave it on 16. Give yourself a 13 in con so those concentration spells hold a little easier. A 12 for intelligence, 10 for wisdom, and smack your plus 1 bonus onto your charisma for 16. Even numbers are almost always better to be on since that's when your skills scale, and a plus 3 to dex and charisma checks is nothing to be sniffed at for a level 1. Take minor illusion and vicious mockery as your cantrips for damage and utility, and grab Sleep, Dissonant Whispers, Tasha's Hideous Laughter and Speak with Animals to round off your spells. Now, let's level up real quick. At level 2, take Charm Person as your spell to really take control of any social encounter. At level 3, grab the College of Swords subclass and take the Cloud of Daggers spell. It's one of the best spells for area control in the game and is an absolute must. Take the Dueling Fighting style to whack up the chances of you landing a hit and swap Charm Person out for Detect Thoughts so you always know what everyone thinks of you. At level 4, you'll get another cantrip. Light isn't a bad option and take Heat Metal as your next spell to make you a heavy armor build's worst nightmare. Then pick between adding two points to your charisma for even better social standing, or take the active feat if you're feeling spicy. For level 5, take Speak with the Dead for your next spell. It can prove invaluable if you're stuck for where to go, especially with your high 
Charisma stat and swap out the now underpowered Sleep for Bestow Curse. And finally, at level 6, grab the Fear spell to send enemies running for the hills and get ready for everything the mid to late game has to offer. So that about wraps up everything you need to know about the best bad build in Baldur's Gate 3. Obviously, these are only suggestions. There's honestly no true right or wrong way to build your character, so have fun with it and go make a big song and dance in Baldur's Gate 3. And if you're loving the game as much as we are, check out this video where we talk about why you should choose the Dark Urge for your next playthrough.